Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Tracolin here, and I know you guys have been waiting to see a full flight in the Turbo Commander 690B, and I'm sorry that it's taken so long. Work has been extremely busy this summer, and uh, had the stomach flu for a little while. Haven't had the stomach flu in many, many, many years, uh, but unfortunately, it uh, found me once again. So I was. I was out for about a week and a half, unfortunately. It was a really bad one. And I tried a couple of times to make a video, but my brain was absolutely not working. I couldn't uh, concentrate for the life of me, and I decided not even to upload them. So I wanted to wait until I was feeling a little bit better and actually do one right. Uh, so we are in the Carinado Turbo Commander 690B, and I'm currently sitting at the signature parking at Fresno Air Terminal, and we are going to take a quick probably about a little 50 minute flight down to uh, Burbank uh, from Fresno. It uh, should be nothing too exciting. California this time of year isn't really all that great. I live in this area and there really isn't much to see. Unfortunately, everything's dead um, <laughs> around this time of year. Uh, not too much green going on, uh, but it is a lot of fun flying in California. It's almost impossible to get lost. Uh, when I did my private pilot's uh, training. I actually did. I got my license at Fresno. I uh, went to Maisie Flight School there. Great school. Awesome. Um, had a good time. Did my uh, commercial there. Got uh, got a few endorsements. Got my instrument rating there. Uh, did all my multi-engine stuff there. It was awesome. Uh, love flying there. Great little airports around there to get in and out of and uh, do your training. So um, it, it was awesome. I don't live too far from Fresno anyway, so I know the area really well. Uh, so that's kind of why I wanted to do this flight. I was thinking about doing something somewhere else, but I figured, hey, let's just keep it somewhere uh, that we're familiar with. So it's going to be Fresno Air Terminal, and we're going to head on down to Burmeg. Nothing exciting going on in Fresno right now. The winds are calm. Visibility is clear. Uh, a few clouds scattered up to 25,000. Uh, altimeter is 299 or 3, so we're just you know right above standard. Uh, sea level pressure is 132, no problem. Think airport elevation is 344 feet, so we're sitting right around 300 uh, at signature. Uh, I tried to get Navigraph going this morning. I think they're working on the site. I, I can't even get to the site right now, unfortunately, and the Navigraph uh, desktop application will not even verify my account. So unfortunately, we're going to be without, uh, well, not unfortunately, but uh, I'm going to be without Navigraph this morning, no problem. I went ahead and loaded everything up into Sky Vector, just to give you guys a quick look at what we're doing. We're Fresno Air Terminal. We're going to head uh, just right on south uh, east down to the Visalia VOR. Um, head on down to Shafter. Then we're going to go through Gorman Pass. I'm going to hit Gorman VOR. We're going to stay clear of the TFR that's going on. They've got a TFR that's effective from 720 to 920, valid for 61 days from the surface to 9,000 feet. I don't know what's going on over there, but it's more than likely a fire. Yeah, it says fire right there on the top TFR uh, for fire. Uh, so we're going to stay clear of that. We're going to head over the Gorman VOR and then straight into Burbank. Nothing crazy, but um, something simple for the, uh, the Turbo Commander 690. Uh, we're going to go up to 15,500. I wanted to go up a little bit higher, but I think I'll wait until we do a longer flight. Um, I had a night flight that I had done. I wanted to show you guys what it was to fly at night and how to pick your checkpoints uh, because it's extremely different during the daytime. But unfortunately, that was the video that I did when I was sick. It turned out completely awful, so I decided not to upload it. So I am going to do this flight first. Um, I figured I would do this one and make it simple. Let's do a daytime, nothing crazy, about an hour, and then I'll do a nighttime. It just seemed to make more sense to do it that way instead of doing it in a reverse. So this will be the daytime up to about 10,500, and then I'll do a, a smaller one at nighttime, about 45 minutes, and it'll be from San Diego up to... Um, I think I'm going to do... Um, San Luis Obispo or something else I haven't decided yet, maybe Palm Springs. Um, but we'll stay along the coastline and I'll show you how to pick points at night, how to do your field time and distance. Um, it won't be too, we won't go too high. We'll stay at around 10,500 that way. Um, we keep ourselves at an altitude where we can actually see them. 
Uh, but th that's going to be the flight that we're doing today, uh, or this is going to be the flight we're going to be doing today from Fresno down to Burbank. I haven't loaded it into um, the 750 yet. I wanted to wait because I know uh, a couple of you wanted to see a little bit of a tutorial about how to use the 750. Um, it's actually pretty simple. There's nothing crazy about it. Basically, this is what you're presented with um, when you start up uh, the 750. Uh, you have your map, of course, and you can load terrain in, charts. Unfortunately, the AROC on this thing is really old. I think it's from 2016, and I am not paying for um, a Garmin subscription to update this thing. So, unfortunately for now, this is kind of what we're stuck with. Um, it doesn't even really have like all of the new departures in there and, and the arrivals and everything is from it's old is from 2016 so a lot of the rnav stuff is going to be missing because i know rnav is still sort of new in the u.s so to speak so rnav approaches and departures are still being um uh, written as new for certain airports and always being updated as well so unfortunately i didn't decide to load a standard instrument departure and an arrival into Burbank just because of that I wanted to keep it simple we'll just make it a basic VFR flight that's why we're doing 15.5 and we have procedures that you can load as far as departures so I could technically load a departure in there if I wanted these aren't even really used so I mean I don't even want to use any of these uh, but you pick the departure you'd pick your runway transition and then you could load the departure uh, same thing with an approach. We could load an approach in. ILS, we wanted to shoot the ILS localizer. Uh, one left, uh, which is the back course. I think they have a back course on here. At least they did when I was doing my training there, which was a lot of fun to shoot. You can load nearest airport if you have an emergency or something you want to do. You've got flight service stations. It has a vast array of um, just neat, neat little tips and tricks and stuff that you can use. I'm going to keep it simple. We're going to go to flight plan. I'm going to add a waypoint here. We are going to go to Visalia. And it's going to be Visalia, California VOR. Then we're going to head on down to Shafter. And it knows that one. And then we'll do Gorman and we'll follow pretty much Highway 99 through the Gorman Pass. Um, we'll see if we can see. I don't know if we'll be able to see it very well up at 15.5. Uh, do, do, do. There you are, Mr. Gorman. And we'll do Burbank. I mean, I should have flown a little lower. I, I did all of my training on a, a Piper Tomahawk, which is like sitting in a tiny little garbage can. Um, and I did quite a few flights down south and, and flew through the Garmin Pass. It is a lot of fun, I have to say. Uh, but I was only, you know, probably, you know, 7,500, 6,000, you know, yep, so probably 7,500 more than likely. And we'll go CDI. And that's pretty much it in setting this up. I mean, the GTN is not, it's not all that difficult. If you can figure out the 430, the 530, you can figure out the 750. Everything's just point and click. It's all pretty basic. There's nothing crazy about it. There's plenty of tutorial videos out there too. I'll do an extensive one even more if you guys want me to. Um, but if you can figure out how to, to load a plan on the 530, you can figure out how to just, you know, point and click and get through the menus and set up your flight plan. I even have a video that shows how to upload your flight plans from Sky Vector into the Reality um, GTN 750. A uh, couple programs you got to download, no problem. It's four steps, very simple. And I like to use it because uh, when I'm planning flights on Sky Vector, I like to also use user waypoints. I want to pick my own waypoint for field time and distance instead of just doing VOR to VOR. So once you uh, 
you're able to take those user waypoints that you have uploaded into the sky vector and implement them into the 750 as well. So it's kind of a neat little feature, but there's a, I have a video up on my page about how to do that. It's not hard to figure out. I really wish that they had the weather and the traffic implemented in this. It would just, I don't know. I think it would just really complete the 750. And then maybe if, if reality would like once a year, just, you know, release a new air rack for it. I mean, I don't know for 50 bucks. I think it does come a little bit limited, unfortunately, but nonetheless, it, it's kind of one of those things where you get what you get. But I think for 50 bucks, I think they could do it a little bit better. I think they should release a newer air rack. Um, it'd be nice if they could, you know, upload a weather update for this thing and a traffic since the um, Avladine uh, system we have over here is practically useless. It doesn't do anything. Uh, the next thing I want to do um, is upload the uh, Visalia VOR frequency 109.4. We'll transfer that and I will get shafters in there. 115.4. Yep, that's fine. I don't mind keeping the terrain on. It sort of just kind of disappears once we start climbing anyway. That redness goes away. Well, I'm almost ready for taxi. All I really have to do is get this thing out of beta, make sure that the weather hasn't changed. There should be a new... Uh, ADIS coming out. It's 8.51 a.m. here in California, so the new one should be popping up. Unless, because uh, it's 15.52. Yeah, see, that's 14.53, so that's an hour old. So I'm going to leave that window up. And if you're wondering what this is, uh, what I have is SkyMax Pro. I think it's version 4.0 that's come out with the uh, NOAA weather update. And uh, that comes with a little METAR quarry, which allows you to basically just anywhere you are, you can stick in your ICAO and it'll give you the weather information anywhere in the world, no matter where you are. So it's nice instead of having to bounce out, loading up Chrome or Firefox or whatever you use, um, I can do it straight in here. Works great. So I'm going to pull this thing out of beta. Let me get my stuff situated here. Let me do a little quick reading real quick. I know I need to be... Yeah, I need to be above 85% RPM in order to pull them out of beta. So I'm above 85. I'm going to pull them up just a little bit more. That's fine. We'll pull ourselves into reverse. Pull back a little bit on the condition levers, and then we'll pull her up. And there, now we're out of beta. All right, environmental mode selector goes to auto. Taxi light's going to come on. And I have to say, unfortunately, I do not like taxiing this aircraft. I understand that they try to make it as real as possible. And in the real TC-690B, you're riding the brakes a lot on taxi. But unfortunately, maneuvering this aircraft on the ground, and I really wish I wouldn't have loaded up on signature, because it's completely on the other end of the airport of where I want to take off. Uh, but taxiing this aircraft is not fun. Um, I tend to, you tend to have to pull it into beta and out of beta and into beta and out of beta to keep it from taxiing at like, you know, almost dang near 50 knots. You know, so it's a little annoying. It feels a little bit more like controlling a paper airplane than a 3,500 pound aircraft. So I, I can guarantee you in the real world, world, this aircraft does not feel uh, like it taxis the way it does on here. It really feels like I'm maneuvering a little paper airplane. Even in the air, it does. It's it's a little quick to respond. Um, it bounces up and down. I've kind of finagged it a little to where I like it, 
but I really wish they would do a little bit better. Carinado should do a little bit better at making it feel like you're actually taxing the real aircraft, meaning the, the weight should take into account as well. Now I've got three hours of fuel on board here. We're running um, right around 9,500 pounds. And you'll, you'll see when I start taxiing this thing, it's extremely difficult, it's very frustrating. Um, I know other people have complained about the same thing, so it's not just me, thankfully. Uh, like I said, it feels unfortunately more like um, a little paper airplane. I think I've got everything else ready. I do want to keep my weather window up, waiting for that weather, new weather change to come in. We're still 299 or 3, taxi lights on. And I think I can get out of here up here. This isn't quite what Signature looks like in the real world. world. Um, actually, this isn't what it looks like at all. So they've got the buildings in the wrong place. Unfortunately. These buildings are actually a little bit further uh, south of the field. Um, it's not quite as long. Signature is actually more or less over here, back where this kind of this building is. That's, let me pan out here. So this is uh, this belongs to Maisie. This is where this is where Maisie parks all of their planes right here. They have a fleet of Tomahawks. They have a an Arrow, and they have uh, two Pepper Seminoles. And this is the shop where they do all of their maintenance. But it's also hooked up. It's also connected to Signature. So this this actual cement area comes out all the way out here, and this is where you park. This is where Maisie and the people from Signature park, which is right here, which is missing. And this building actually goes all the way out here. So this part right here actually belongs to uh, Maisie and Signature. They have their hangar. Both of their hangars are right here where they do all of their maintenance. And then they also have Signature downstairs has their main lobby um, where their clients come in and their pilots come in. And then upstairs is where the school is. So I haven't found any updated scenery, unfortunately. This building right here, I don't even know what this building is which is kind of funny, and these tiny little porter potty buildings back here. Uh, but this area actually does exist. Um, th there's a small little FBO right here um, that's on the field, a tiny little uh, school that operates out of here. Um, this is actually not right here. This building should be over here, behind here. So whoever did this did a, did a good job. They did a decent job you know, of doing it, but all the buildings and everything are in the wrong place, and the parking for, for Signature is actually right here. So they park right next to Maisie. That you come in right here, and they they pretty much have all their parking all around here. So we're it doesn't really matter anyway. We're gonna take um, Taxiway Alpha all the way out. But anyway, I like Fresno. Fresno's a fun little airport to fly in. Uh, but as uh, as Castrator says, uh, nobody goes to Fresno. <laughs> All right. Yep. There we go. All right. Updated, and we're two nine or nine or five. So pressure is obviously increasing. Want to make sure that is two nine or nine or five, right? Yeah. Two, three, four, five. There we go. All right. Yep. And we're right around. Should be around three hundred and forty-four feet for the airport elevation. Winds are two three zero at three. Yes, I don't care about you. And the visibility still is clear. It looks like scatter is coming down. 20,000. We're going to be at 15.5, so we will be okay. Let me rotate this. And we're going to take 2.9 or left. We'll just take, uh, if we're in the right area here, it should be Bravo 11. Bravo 11 to Bravo. Yeah, we'll take Bravo all the way down to Bravo 2 and hold short. So, taxi lights on. Most electric switch is set to auto. Uh, I'm not going to mess with the NTS uh, or anything like that. I've already got a video up showing you how to do all of that. So, overspeed governors as required. Conditional levers are doo -doo -doo, right where I want them for now. We're going to be in ground mode. Just looking at the before taxi checklist. Yeah, propellers are currently unlocked. Conditional levers are above 85%. 
and an enunciator is checked. Not going to mess with any of the ice protection. It is hot out there. All right, we are ready to go. We got our current eight is two nine or nine or five. Wins two three zero at three, and we're basically just going to be uh, left out one departure. I think should be easy enough. And I'm still curious to see if Navigraph is working. I thought maybe it was me. I tried to load Navigraph desktop, and it told me that my Yeah, that seems to be working now. So let me... Let me load it up and see. I tried to start the Navigraph graph charts the desktop and told me that my uh, subscription was not valid. And I was like, well, I know it's valid because I just paid. Yep, it's working now. And then I tried to go to the website and I couldn't even get to the website, so figured all right maybe they're maybe they're working on something i was going to bug them on facebook and shoot them a quick message and see what was going on but they're never usually down for very long when they are down so uh, i'm glad i didn't because it's back up now anyway It's always just a little bit easier getting around at familiar airports. I've been I flew into Bear, uh, Burbank once, but it's been a few years um, since I've actually been into that airport. I remember thinking of how easy it was. I remember we were coming over the uh, the Gorman Pass, and um, I was actually flying as a safety pilot for that flight for uh, a guy who hadn't flown um, down there, and he was a little unfamiliar with the area, and he had a business meeting he wanted to go to, and brought me along and uh, as soon as you get over the Gorman Pass you you know it was a nice clear day where I could see the airport you know from you know, about 45 nautical miles out almost yeah we basically just came in straight on on uh, 1-5 it was pretty simple okay so yeah, Bravo 11 Bravo parking 7 okay Easy enough. And I'm pretty sure I could find the... Nope, not going to be here. It's going to be... Charts. And I have FAT. Yep. There's no Yosemite. I wanted to look at the airport information. So they got everything in here, but the, you know, unfortunately, they don't have runway. Um, not runway. Um, they don't have weather data. No TAMs. Would be nice to see that. And you can actually do full if you want to see full. You can invert the colors if you want to do nighttime. You can split it. You can do airport information. You can zoom in, see where you are, where you need to go. Not bad, good enough. All right, there's Visalia. I'll pop it out one. Reset. I actually do want to change my fuel because I burned 30 minutes of fuel. I want to get back to. I want to go back to three hours. Okay, and at the, now the moment I've been dreading the most, the uh, the taxi. So parking brake's coming in, and away she goes. Holy crap. If you can see what I mean about the taxi.
Wow, she is just really... Alright, let me pull her back into beta a little. There we go. Alright, that's where we're going to be taxing. Alright, even if it doesn't matter how much power, even just a little bit of tiny bit of power added, and w once you get out of beta, I mean, see, we're just barely even out of beta. There's 10 knots, 11 knots, 12 knots. She's just in an absolute hurry to. And I don't have any traffic on. I do have uh, X Lite installed, uh, but they don't support traffic for uh, Fresno. They do for Burbank, so we should be able to see the traffic moving in and out of Burbank once we get down there. All right, and we're riding the brake still. Now the ones are calm enough, I probably could have taken off out of 1-1 one, one right, but... This will allow us to do, uh... Fly a little bit of runway heading and gain some altitude. Alright, let's go back down into beta. Alright, yeah, and then just let her slowly pull out of 21, 20, 20 knots. It's, it's quite a bit of a taxi down there. That was the only problem about being at Maisie. I mean, we're always at the other end of the runway, and only during the winter time usually will the winds change in this part. So during the winter time, we got to use the one ones quite a bit. Now, especially during the morning, early in the morning, you were guaranteed a one one uh, right departure. And then about ten o'clock, when everything started burning off, all the fog started kind of burning off, and everything, the winds would start changing, and they'd go back to two nines. But you know, every once in a while throughout the day, it would stay. It would favor the one ones. But, uh, yeah, that was the only bummer is, you know, the long taxi. You got to learn how to taxi really well for sure. Alright, there's 14 knots. Alright, pull her out of beta again. Just a little bit. And you can see even just out of beta how quickly it jumps up. Doesn't take much at all. And at Fresno they definitely want you under 20 knots taxi. Yeah, especially the smaller, smaller you are. We're coming up on Bravo 3. Next will be Bravo 2. Bravo 2 is where we always pulled in, did our run-ups. That's where everybody takes off on 2-9 left. Full length. And for 2-9 left, it's visual only. 2-9 right has the, uh, the extended runway and uh, ILS. Alright, maybe a little bit more beta here. We're getting close to 30 knots. Yeah, it's it's just, to me, it's just not really fun taxiing this aircraft. I mean, it, it is real in the sense that you're constantly on the pedals. You know, this way and that way. Left and right. But t to me, it's just, it's kind of annoying. Right, let me throw the brake on. Before takeoff, all right, flight controls are free and clear. Trip tabs are, yeah, let me see here. I want to set my trim. Trim set, nav set, flight instruments are, 
Looking good. I want to set uh, a heading. We're going to be 15,500 on the altitude. Oops. Come on. Why do you got to do this to me? Just. There's 15,500. Alright, engine instruments, everything looks like we're in the green here. Uh, Maxwell switch is going to be normal. Cabin altitude is set to 15.5. Uh, don't have the oxygen regulator in here, so I don't have to worry about that. Engine control frictions are set where I want them. Prop sync, prop sync switch is off. Flap control lever is currently up, and I'm not going to worry about the horsepower limiting system. All right, uh, ice protections as required. Power levers are ground idle. Conditional levers are coming to high RPM. Ignition override uh, is coming up on both sides. All right, beta light is extinguished. Engine instruments are still in the green and check. I'm going to keep her in beta just a little bit for the taxi. Trust me, this thing has no problem fishtailing on the ground and, and getting up. Going to leave our flaps up. We don't need flaps for the takeoff. She is super sensitive on the ground as far as the taxi goes, especially on the rudders. There's a hundred, we're coming up. All right, there's positive rate. Gears coming up. Ignition overhead's coming on. Yep, let's start our turn. Keep our climb going in. Okay, climb's gonna. All right, we're gonna set climb to about 90, 96% RPM. You do not want to go below 96 RPM. So we're gonna keep her about 96. Power back, so our climb power. Prop sinks coming on, taxi lights coming off. Keep our landing lights on. Got my trim set up here.
Do, 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 do. Should start coming in real soon here. Start our climb. I want to get a little bit bigger of a climb going on here. That'll work. I don't think I had the CD on right. There we go. What did I have it set to? I had it set it to V-Lock, that's why. Alright. I saw CDI, but I was looking at the wrong thing. I'm still getting used to the 750 myself. I've only used it a couple times. In that sense, uh, let me see if I can figure out how to... Oops. That wasn't what I wanted to do, was it? There we go. And now we can hit nav. And I want to keep that climb going. You want to climb typically about 139 uh, knots indicated to 5,000 feet and then about one knot per every, uh, one knot, um, minus one knot for every 1,000 feet above 5,000 feet. We're currently at 8.7. So I need to get this thing climbing much, much better. All right, keep her at 500. It's a good climb speed. And we're about right at 96% RPM. Maybe, maybe a little bit more, there we go. Now we're at 96. All right, conditional levers are where I want them. Prop sync switch is on, pressurization instruments. We'll monitor the pressurization, there we go. We're looking good. I think we're set at, yeah, we're set at right up 15.5. And we're just passing 1.0. Cabin climb looks good. Oxygen system is not modeled, so I don't got to worry about that. And I don't need you anymore because I can just look down. And Ground cool max flow. Max flow is set to normal because I don't need uh, additional heat or anything. Ice protection is required. Computer and fill vents can come on. Go left and right. That way I don't get too cold. And everything else is okay. I have to do say, uh, the, the 750 does really complete this aircraft. I like the 530, the 530 is fine, nothing wrong. Uh, but the, 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 the 750 just, it just looks good in this aircraft. It really does. And it looks like we're moving right along. Let me see here. Let me pull this over here. Like I said, Navigraph is working now, so there's our track. We're getting close to Visalia. We're three minutes away on a heading of 148. And everything's looking good. We're climbing right around right around 140 knots, which is right where I want to be. 
Bring our power back up to 500. We're just keeping an eye on that. Looks like we're about to hit 13.5. Yep. So we got about 2,000 more feet to go. Pardon the allergies. Um, I can throw the secondary in here. 115. I'll load the secondary up in our standby. So this is why I don't like using the 750 as, oh, sorry about that, yeah, there we are a thousand feet away. This is why I don't like using the 750 as a transponder because then we get this valid information here that shows our current bearing and our estimated time of arrival to our current waypoint. Um, there's a perfectly good 327 sitting over here um, to use. So if you are using the 750 and you're doing a lot of VFR flying and you uh, are getting your pilot's license or you're wanting to, um, sorry, excuse me, I just had breakfast, uh, and you're wanting to um, do your field time and distance calculations and whatnot, leave, leave uh, the, the uh, transponder off and keep this information running for you because um, it works a lot better because I was estimated let me see let's look here because I'll do since we're we're almost to altitude we're actually no we're at altitude 15.5 we're good so I'm going to pull her back to 400 on the power levers I'm going to keep it at 400 we'll try to do it'll hopefully keep, keep us around 230 knots Depending. So we're about 30 seconds out, and our estimated time of arrival um, to uh, Shafter, it looks like, should be 16 minutes. So I'm going to lock that in here and see actually how long it takes us. I know we're going to get our, our time here, but I also want to time it on here. So yeah, Sky Vectors has roughly 16 minutes and we're looking at 15. So we probably got a good tailwind and I'm hoping we're getting up to around 230 knots. Now I'm doing 400, I'm doing 400 RPM. Um, standard is 300. 96% uh, RPM on, on your condition levers and the power levers back to, to 300 horsepower. I like to keep her around 400 uh, because it's simulated. But if you want to fly actual world world um, performance uh, settings, then you're going to be back to 300 and 96% RPM on the conditional levers. Let's see what 300 gives us. Let me pull out on the 750 here and drag her down a bit. All right, there's Shafter. So we just crossed Visalia. Uh, Visalia is a pretty cool little town. Um, nothing great there. That's usually where I want to go on the weekends if I want to have fun. There it is. Highway 198 runs all along here. So this is Highway 198. And on the eastern part of um, where it hits the, the 99 is where Visalia Airport is. So there's Visalia Airport. And then here is Highway 99 that runs all the way along north and south of California. So it's a great navigational aid. This is Tulare right here. It's another small town. Great. And we have the Southern Sierra Nevadas. Let me see what else I can see out here. Uh, this little town out here is uh, Lindsay. Nice tiny little town here. <laughs> Other than that, there's not much out here. I think that's Corcoran. Not bad. It's a nice, nice, clear day to go flying. So we're doing 210 knots indicated, 
uh, right around 300 horsepower. So typically I like to do right around 230, so that's why I bump it up to 400. Now that'll give us our good 50 minute uh, flight time that I was, you know, looking for. So the autopilot in this sucker is fairly easy. Um, all we had to do is activate our GPS, hit our nav. Um, you don't have to hit altitude. It'll, it'll capture the altitude for you. You just set in whatever you want when you take off. And once you engage it, it'll capture that altitude for you. Um, let me see if I wanted to go up to 16,000. So, autopilot off. Set our altitude. We'll climb. Push her up to 15. And you don't have to hit altitude again. I know the light's off. But once it gets up to 16, it should capture 16. See, the altitude light comes on. I noticed uh, some videos where people were having a little bit of trouble with uh, working and figuring out the altitude. And there it's captured 16. Pretty simple. So I want to go back down to 15. 15.5, uh, altitude off. Set 15.5. We'll go down. Did I hit altitude off? There we go, altitude off. And do do do, altitude's going down. And you don't have to hit it again. It knows what you have set in. Pull the power back a little. And I'll just leave it at 400. So, altitude light comes back on. Reset my trim. And there's 15.5. It's, it's very simple. It took me a while to figure it out too. Don't don't uh, <laughs> don't get frustrated. I didn't figure it out the first time myself either. It was kind of actually by accident. Um, so there you have it. All right, cruise uh, power levers. Uh, maximum recommended cruise is seventeen or seven hundred and seventeen point five HP um, at ninety six percent RPM. And that, of course, is maximum. I'm not going to go anywhere near that. Condition levers are 96%, uh, where it says, caution, in flight, do not reduce engine RPM below 96%. So, so make sure that you keep your RPMs right at 96%. You don't want to go below that. And I'll keep a shaft horsepower right around 400. And we're making good time. Oxygen system, like I said, it is not modeled in this aircraft so I'm not worried about it. Cabin altitude pressure looks good. Um, whenever we're going to descend what we'll do is we'll set the uh, cabin pressure altitude to 1000 feet above our field elevation. Field elevation at Burbank They always have it in a different area on these charts. I know our landing field elevation is 778 feet. Tower is 825 feet. Uh, 
So, yeah, airport elevation 778 feet. So we'll set it to 1,778 feet whenever we descend. This is a good view for. Uh, and you do need to transfer that. We're flying the back horse. It's a good view for some IFR flying. There was a problem loading the scenery, Burbank, the scenery may not look correct, please, yeah, 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 that, that always ends up looking correct. There you go. The frequency for Gorman, 116.1. I don't need to be in pan mode. So Visalia to Shafter to Gorman. All right. It's a cool little feature there. We're currently just under six minutes away. It turned out to be a really good flight. And this is basically what you see in California during this time of year. Everything is dead. Everything's brown. Nothing, uh, nothing too exciting going on. The only thing green are pretty much the farming areas that are down there. Um, and that's all pretty much right over to Larry County just about. see where we are on the map. Yeah, we just passed Porterville. There's a tiny little town of Porterville where I'm from. There's Lake Success. And up in here you have the town of Springville. And we're obviously getting pretty close to Bakersfield. I'm about 55 minutes from Bakersfield. And here's the big town of Bakersfield. All of this. And the airport should be right up here. Right about our 11 o'clock. I do got to give Carinado props. I really do uh, like the inside of the cockpit of this aircraft. It has been a ton of fun to fly. The, like I said, the only thing I really don't care for is the taxi and just a little bit of the way it handles after you know after takeoff. It, it feels more like a paper airplane than an actual airplane. Which is, you know, could be a little frustrating. But I do love the inside of the cockpit. Uh, the way it looks, the way they modeled. I really wish they would get rid of this um, Avidyne system. Uh, because it's completely uh, garbage. It's useless. It doesn't do anything. And I wish they would put in some more instruments. That would really complete this aircraft. Would be to get rid of that. Uh, I think it's like the E600X or something or whatever it is. Get rid of that, give us some more instruments, and fix the modeling of the aircraft, the way it handles, and she'd be really good. She's fun to fly at night. I can't wait to upload the night video and show you guys uh, what it looks like at night to fly in this, because it's super fun, too. It looks like we're just under three minutes away, and we're coming up on 11 minutes and 40 seconds, so I think we're going to make good time. Yeah, we're going to be right under our 16 minute window. And I'm just curious if I can still see... Yep, there's... yep. 
This is Highway 99. Right along here. There's Bakersfield Airport. Right at our 11 o'clock. 11 to 12 o'clock. I'm just curious to see if I can see white men. There's a tiny little airport. Just before you cross over. There it is, right there. There's Whiteman. So I want to make sure we're exactly where we're supposed to be on our sky vector route, which we are. We should be passing just to the right of the field, which we are. And there's Highway 99. So the pass looks a little bit different in uh, real life than what I'm seeing here. But what happens is 99 starts going right here and what it does is it starts turning just a little bit more to the uh, the south, uh, the southeast, and follows all the way through here, all the way into the, and through Gorman, uh, until it, and then it runs into the I-5. So it, it, uh, it actually turns into, right into the, uh, the I-5. So we passed Shafter and we did it in about 14 minutes. And our next leg should be about 11 minutes, uh, about 12 minutes. Well, we're passing Shafter. Put it in our standby as well. Yeah, the pass looks a little bit, little bit different. It actually looks more like what you see over here. Uh, with the elevation on this side being just a little bit higher, but it, you know, basically that's why they call it Gorman Pass. So it does look a little bit like it's coming in through there, and we're still right over 99. And Bakersfield's a pretty big town. Uh, for this area, I should say. Bakersfield and Fresno are our uh, big cities. Yep, there's Gorman. And we'll be coming right up along Gorman Pass. And here's the I-5. So here's the 5 right over Highway 99 right now, and then they'll merge together right when we go through the Gorman Pass. So right when we start going through here, that's where the I-5 over here, I don't think we can see it very well. And 
Not quite yet. We should be able to. That's the crazy thing. It's twice as big as the 99. So what should what it should do is is actually come out about here and converge just before we start getting to these smaller mountains. And it'll run up along in here. Looks like we got some clouds over the uh, over the pass. So let's reset our altimeter. So I'm gonna have to go to. Uh, Got to make me switch to full screen to fix that. There we go. I can pull it down here now. I don't mind full screen anyway. What's the closest airport? Bakersfield Municipal. And they don't have one available. No big deal. Two nine or nine or five, which is what we're still at. Two nine or nine or five. So we're good there. There's really no airports close to us. Uh, if we had to land, we would definitely have to turn around and make our way for either the municipal or for uh, Bakersfield itself, because that's all there is around here. Uh, we got a couple of private airports. There's uh, Paradise Lakes, which is private. There's a skydive uh, for San Joaquin. And we could turn and head to Tehachapi if we wanted to. But other than that, our best bet would be to turn around and land straight at Bakersfield. I got about this far once. I, I I planned to do a diversion, and I got I got I taken off from Fresno and a, and the Piper Tom Hawk, and I got I got a, probably about right here, maybe not as far, maybe about uh, two minutes behind, and had turned around and diverted and landed at Porterville, met some friends, had some lunch there. Uh, Porterville does have a diner. I think it's still open. So Porterville Airport still does have a diner that's open. Um, I think it's just called the Porterville Airport Diner. It's open and closed. Um, over my lifetime, you know, many times. I mean, you can go there and get a good, decent burger, you know, a good cup of coffee, you know. They still have those old 30-year-old <laughs> coffee machines that make coffee the way you're, you know, that you're used to tasting it. If you like a good cup of coffee. So they do have what's called a four stacks uh, visual approach into one five. I'm not going to use it because I don't even know if I have the four stacks um, in X Plane 11. So I'm not really going to mess with that. We're not even really coming from that direction. But I do want to start planning for my descent. Let me look and see. Um, turn to a final approach for runway one five. We do need to be at or above 3,000. There is a mountain to our right that we'll be coming into. That's right around 4,000 feet. So I'm going to stay just to the left of that. Yeah. Um, outside air temperature about 5,000 recommended. Then you cross New Hall. Then uh, San Gabriel's 4,003 feet. So, boop, 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 yep. Okay, there's the five, and there's the 99, and this is where they merge together. You don't even have to. You don't even have to do anything. You just stay on the 99. Merges into the I-5, comes in through here, whips around a couple of couple of times. So let me look at this sector right, right here, 8,400 is the biggest part of this sector. So I am going to go ahead and start my descent 
down to 10.5. So I'm going to turn altitude off, verify it's off, we'll do 10.5. It didn't turn off, did it? It turned back on, that's what happened last time, it turned back on. There we go. So the best thing to do is probably set your altitude, then turn the altitude off, then start your descent. I don't want to go down at that fast though. I mean, come on. Let's pull our power back. Keep it at 1,000. I'm going to set my cabin altitude. Do our Nessie paddle test. All good. And ice protections as required. And we're coming in on the descent. Alrighty. Coming in through the pass now. And there's Burbank. See, nice little quick flight. Nothing too crazy. About a minute and a half out, 1.5. But we'll go ahead and tune the closest VOR to Burbank, which is going to be Van Nuys, 1310. And I want to pop that in here. That way I can stay, use that to stay just the left of that mountain. Uh, use my visual age on Sky Vector as well, as we're just about to pass over Gorman. Looks like we're going to be just to the left of all of these fluffy little clouds. start our left turn. So we crossed over at about 11 minutes and we were estimating about 12 so we made some good time there and it's about uh, 13 minutes. Yep, roughly 13 minutes to Burbank. So let's go ahead and continue down. Uh, I do want to look and see in this sector. Alright, I'm going to take her down to Go ahead and continue down to 5.5. Five. Yeah, I know that altitude buzz is extremely loud. And I can't use the uh, altitude alert cancel. Unfortunately, I don't need that anymore. Load our current time in. 9.50 a.m. Which it is, 16.50 Zulu. It's a nice little flight. So 
So we can do pan mode, we can create a waypoint. I see what it does there. Alright. Wanted to start descending just a little bit more. Since we're uh, only about 11 minutes out. And we'll be straight in for runway 15. We made good time too. I want you to get her up in the air and get her going. 690B is really a fun aircraft to fly. Just make sure you don't do the mistake I did and uh, make sure your CDI is on GPS and not VLOC. <laughs> yeah, I'll be good to go. Even though I am not doing the visual approach, I can still use it as a reference. Um, I'm going to grab a graph. And there's Castig Lake. Along with the power plant. We got our altitude set. Airspace entry in less than 10 minutes. So our conditional levers, prop sync's coming off. Can 
Mission Override's coming on. Got our landing lights on. Let's go ahead and continue down. Not that fast. Alright, that's good enough. Autopilot's coming off. Whoop, 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 whoop. does not like that. There we go. Let's make our left hand turn here. We do need to stop descending. Get a little more altitude going. Because we're going to come right around this mountain here. to do a little bit of mountain flying. After we cross over, we'll make our left hand turn. There's our runway.
Not that bad, not too bad, not too bad. Decent, decent little landing there. See if we can pull off right here. This joyous little taxi. Well, that was a pretty good landing. Not too bad at all. Could have been worse. Could have been a little better. Came in, you know, a little bit fast. Uh, but we, uh, we seem to round it out there at the end. Yeah, not too bad. Pull in here and do a little bit of parking. Pull up to the Cessna. That's good enough. So for the parking brake here, the parking brake has decided not to work. So we're stuck without a parking brake. <laughs> Interesting. Well, as soon as we kick everything off here. There we go. Now we got our parking brake. Probably because I didn't uh, lock the propellers. Wish I wasn't in too much of a hurry. Do unlocking the propellers is basically in the same sequence as unlocking them. All right, so after landing, power levers, everything's all good there. Engine shutdown is good. Cabin altitude turned out to be good, and that was pretty much it. That was a nice little flight from Fresno to Burbank. Hope you guys enjoyed that in the Carinado Turbo Commander 690B. My next one will be a night flight where we will do some uh, time and distance calculations to help some of you who uh, may be going through your uh, training uh, and want to learn uh, what to do in order to pick uh, waypoints that are visible at night and do your uh, time and distance calculations. 
But I guys hope you guys uh, did enjoy this little flight from uh, Fresno down to Burbank. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Definitely want to do something like this again. Um, we'll go a little bit higher next time. Actually, I'll do a, I'll do the night one, and then uh, we'll take this thing up to twenty five thousand, maybe twenty six thousand feet or something to do a nice IFR flight. Because I've uh, also watched some other videos where people seem to have a little bit of uh, a struggle getting the aircraft that high. Um, it's really not that difficult at all, as long as you follow the correct power settings, climb settings. Um, you can do it fairly easy, even at um, you know, even at you know, 75% gross weight. Uh, not a problem at all. Um, if there's anything else you guys want to see, uh, leave a comment below and let me know. Uh, if you have any questions, um, I'll answer them the best of my ability. Um, if I don't know the answer, I'll find the answer. Uh, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this flight. Um, hope you guys have an amazing morning, uh, just a wonderful afternoon, a fantastic evening. My name's Dr. Colin, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Like I said, if you like this video, hit the like down there, follow, subscribe, leave me questions, and I will catch you guys later.